follow meeting the order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolve that the agenda for the July 3rd, 2018 regular meeting of Council be received. Discussion? All in safe, favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delore. Resolve the minutes of the June 19th, 2018 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have the delegation with Sergeant Henson and Corporal Hannah and Clayton, introduce yourself please. Nice to meet you. My name is Clayton Gohelmi. Um, I've been in Swan River for about four months now okay. and I'm enjoying it. Okay. Well, maybe we just go around the table and introduce ourselves starting with Derek. I'm Derek, Superintendent of Works. Jason Sacco, Counselor. Phil Friesen, Counselor. Wayne White, Counselor. Glenn McKenzie, Mayor. Jason Delorier, Counselor. David Morio, Councilor. Judy Father Welcome to our council meeting and welcome Thank you. to Swan River. Okay. Maybe you'll stay. Yeah. So council, <laughs> council has uh, in their uh, package the RCMP reports for April, May, and June. And we'll just turn it over to uh, Ross. Okay. So uh, in the month of April, we had 263 uh, incidents in Swan River. For persons' crimes, we had one aggravated assault, four assault with a weapon, 14 assaults, four other threats, and one possessed weapon. We had 41 prisoners during that time as well. Um, the next month, we had a similar amount of incidents, 252 incidents in May, four assault with a weapon, six assaults, five other threats, one possessed weapon, and one arson endangering life, and we had 32 prisoners. Um, for the month of June, we had an increase in files, 310 incidents with uh, two assault with a weapon, 16 assaults, two other threats, and one forcible confinement. And then we had 53 prisoners in, uh, in the month of June. So things were uh, picking up in the warmer months uh, for the month of June. And we also had a <coughs> more disturbances and breach of the peace in the month of June at, uh, at uh, 33. Uh, previous month of May was 24 and 25 in uh, in April, so with with the warmer months, we have more more things happening and more people in, in cells as a result. Any questions, councillors? Council yeah. White. Firstly, thank you. Then you know it's going to be seeing the four or five months in a row there. It made me more appreciative of how things are changing. The one title you had in there was drugs, and seven, eight, ten, whatever. Them. What does that mean, drugs? Is it people arrested? So, sometimes these files are are deceiving with with the, with the statistics we. We may have a file where we actually seized a drug, but it also could be a file where we, we may have had some information about a drug, but there's no avenue yet of, of investigating, you know, that, really that, yeah. And then looking at, uh, I was trying to wonder if you, I'm sure you do, if you can share, because obviously there's some things you won't share and shouldn't. What's specifically happening? Because uh, Sergeant Hinson and I have been attending a few meetings <coughs> recently where there's a significant concern in our community about uh, drugs. Is it, is it a thing that are, are stepping up the, the watch, getting bigger guns? I don't know. Well, the thing with drugs, the thing we need from the public is we need people to call in and tell us things about the drug usage. So if the public can do that, we'd very much be happy to receive that information. They can remain anonymous. They can uh, just, just point, it, point us in the right direction. Because quite often, if you have a piece of the puzzle where there's lots of uh, are you people, one person reports a person's name, uh, it's it's not enough, but if a few more people report the same thing, well, it may be enough to for us to be uh, have an investigation that comes together with little pieces of information, which which can result in a search warrant or or uh, apprehensions for drugs, because drugs are are uh, very a difficult crime to to catch people for. Just the third question I have: uh, foot patrols. Maybe I don't see them. Are foot patrols happening now, or with the, with the number of uh, shortages that we currently have? We're trying to get some foot patrols out there, but they're not. They haven't picked up as much as we'd like because it's it's now it's now July, so it's now time to to get more. We we haven't had as many as, as we'd like to have, uh, but S Sergeant Henson started them on April 19th, and then s since then we've had a few in May and a few in June, but not enough. There hasn't been enough foot patrols, and we we want to increase that. It's on your list. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have and a full complement right now on the town section? Yes. 
And one thing we're also asking for the public, just as a, and it's and it's always something that comes up at the meeting town meetings, is that that if we have if some people can call in about the, the the loud mufflers and the vehicles that are making noise around town, we would like to have a license plate number that matches the description of the vehicle. If we can, if, if people might think, well, I already reported that vehicle. Well, no, it's good good to keep track. If some people can keep track of the same vehicle doing the same thing over a period of time, then we could we could do more with that vehicle. Because like I said in the past, if people want to give a statement, we can go investigate that vehicle. If they don't want to give a statement, but they want to just see, maybe they see that vehicle six or seven times in a month while they're out and they, they, they record the plate number every time, it provides a better investigation where if a vehicle is known by several people to be causing the same problem and, they, and the police are aware of that same vehicle, well, perhaps we could have a stronger uh, way of, of finding out how to deal with it because we could, um, um, if it came to the point where somebody's driver's license needed a review, well, that, that may be an option. You know, if we don't charge them under the Highway Traffic Act, perhaps, and it, it would be a rare case, but there, if, it, if there was enough calls about a particular vehicle that was acting up, maybe uh, if we couldn't catch them in the act, well, maybe that's something that with the sheer number of people calling about a particular license plate, that maybe uh, the licensing board would make me detail a conversation with that driver, maybe retest them because they're not they're not you know uh, acting properly on the roads. Councilor Moore, a question. Yeah, uh, a couple questions. Um, first one is the uh, now that uh, cannabis is now passed through its legal groups at uh, in Ottawa regarding um, being legalized. legalized um, from your point of view, what potential increase or complications or whatever was that going to mean for the town as to is it going to increase your workload at all or I think at this point you know it's we all the laws are have been in place for a very long time like 30 grams and less uh, for marijuana possession was it was a thing that was uh, created a few years back where where that became a summary conviction offense if someone was in possession of 30 grams or less so that that's still going to be there if they if they legal or uh, now when they make it more Legal. We, we still don't have all of the, the, the guidelines and parameters that we're going to have to be following once once it gets actually in the stores and being sold. But the, the fact is, if somebody possesses more than the, the amount that they've stipulated, well, then it's still going to be the same as it ever was. But it, it could be complicated until they provide more information as to how the guidelines are going to be. Because your input as we deal with the zoning but and other related bylaws with it, uh, I think um, your department's input in that would be greatly beneficial in helping us draft those type of... We're still getting information coming into us okay. and essentially there'll be changes to the criminal code and part of it is to do with driving too and they also have certain <clears throat> instruments that are in the test spaces as uh, far as picking up people for certain drugs and there's also your sobriety type training as well that we can we can use so <clears throat> we did have a meeting in Dolphin <clears throat> And there was a few things that were passed on to us, and there was sort of work in progress. September is one date that was given to us at the time. And then they said when certain things came to fruition, other things for us would be about six month lag in that. So we're still waiting for more information. There's certain things in the media on that. But uh, when I've read some of that, um, it may not be as free as people think. Uh, essentially, simple possession is simple possession, but essentially, you can't just go on the streets and do whatever and we're waiting for some clarification and waiting for some statutes to come out and some policy and some tools and it's very much in the works and uh, we're still getting information on it. Cool. Uh, second question since we have a citizen of our community that uh, is an inspiring artist that doesn't appreciate the words that we have on our town sign here, um, any insight onto that if we know who he is or we, we would welcome the public to uh, provide information on that investigation at this time. Um, it's an ongoing investigation, so we couldn't uh, speak to that at this meeting. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Delorean. I see that we got a, a first glimpse at the new report. Um, and in the, uh, the page titled uh, District Summary of Unit Expenditures, how do these numbers in here where do they come from or, or what do they mean to us really because they don't they don't match up to the the big number we send you guys every year right because it's the latest report that was sent to me i don't uh, go in there and get the data i wait till they send the reports and it's the latest one i had okay and essentially it was it was supposed to be fiscal year end 
Okay. And I know for some things that I know when I'm doing finances, I add on another month. It's a 13 month year, not 12, just to catch those things that weren't processed. So basically what I'm <clears throat> doing with that is just the sheet, the template they sent to us, and uh, I edited everything else out that had to do with other detachments and district, and just stuck with this to give a ballpark. And it shows a trend from, dip, from year to year. And uh, basically it's, um, it's not 100% accurate, but it kind of gives you a feel for what's been going on budget-wise. Okay. Um, and I see the acronym ACCP shows up in the report. And that's one position we have, and it's uh, a First Nation position. And okay. it's uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> there's it's a blend of federal and provincial funding, so there's some <coughs> federal money in there. Okay. The matter of the auxiliary constable, uh, we didn't get one this year. A reservist? A reservist, yeah. Uh, no, put in for months and months ago, and we were uh, getting one. That's some miles on the golf course, so he's probably other he's, priorities. He's out of it, it's mm -hmm. unfortunate. But last year we were supposed to only have him for one month, and we had him for six. So we're pretty lucky. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much uh, for the report. We appreciate you taking the time to be here and report to council. Thank and you. Again, I'm this one over. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to item 4-2 on the agenda. Troy Curtin as a delegation. Council has the information on your screen uh, regarding the proposed paving project. Welcome Hello. to Council Meeting. Hello, how's it going? <coughs> Thanks for the time. Um, I have a question about the bylaw itself. The proposed section that was to be paved has now changed after it was all approved by the municipal board and objected to by me. Um, there, there's a Block 1311 is being taken out of that. And I'm just wondering why that's happening. Do you want to report on that, Derek? Uh, well, what we sent in on our application is what we see in the bylaw. So nothing was changed uh, after the municipal board approved this. So what we sent in the bylaw is what the municipal board approved. So 1311 is not included in the, in the uh, in the plan for payment, but it, as far as the project goes, like uh, we're 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 stopping that project right on that property line. It's like I don't know you call it an inch, but either way, uh, we included that property in there uh, on the drawing. But it, as far as is what we're required to do. Uh, on listing the properties that are included in the improvement plan under C, potential taxpayers, uh, it's not listed. They won't be charged because the, they won't be paved. But why it's in the bold section, it's not. It's you know, and we didn't. The municipal board didn't raise a question on it, but uh, we figured we'd rather be safe than sorry. It's right on the line. We included it on the drawing. We didn't take it out but uh, it was not questioned uh, by the municipal board during their approval. Okay. Councillor Sample. So on 13th there, it comes straight down and runs into that 1311. So across the street is 316. So where's the paving actually gonna end? Is it ending at 316 and coming straight down and gonna hit portion of 1311 or is it gonna end at? It ends right, right at the east end of 1309, right on that property line. So is it going to diagonal across? No, no. It's or is it actually straight with the pictures on it? It's totally straight. You know, like, and it's, it's right across. That's where it oh, right okay. before the end. I just thought it would end. So, so if, you drew a, if you drew a line straight south of three three. three 13th Avenue South 316, is that where it would end? No, it would be straight south or straight north of 1309. <clears throat> okay. So the municipal board, like they, when we write our final bylaw for this, when it's done, they, it has to be from what the project is. Like they understand, like according to municipal government, they understand that things change 
Like if we run out of money or the base miraculously fails between now and paving, we're, we're not going to pay over that. Uh, we will charge for the work that is done. That is, that is, that's basically to be done. Any other questions or comments? I guess the problem that I have is, I believe, do you guys all have this sheet that's all in bold? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was sent out by the town, and if it wasn't correct, then it really shouldn't have been sent out. It should have actually said the exact point of where it was going to stop. The other problem I have is, we're taking out a town lot now. Like the town is taking a piece of its own property out of this paving, as far as I'm concerned. And I have an issue with that. Um, the other thing too is, and the bylaws passed and it's fine, whatever, it's going to happen. I'm not for it, there's no, no hiding that. But I really think when you guys, in the future, when you guys do this, it should be by a street by street basis for the bylaw. There should have been a bylaw for 12th and there should have been a bylaw for 3rd. Because the municipal board is working off a percentage of property. So I own two lots down there. I would have triggered a hearing on this on my street because I would own the majority of property. It has to be 10%. So if we do the math, it works out like it's 1.4 lots would be enough to trigger it. Jason and then Derek. Um, when the ratepayers, uh, Derek, when the ratepayers were uh, sent notice of this, were they were they sent the entire uh, proposal, including like uh, part C here, where it shows where it lists in words which properties were benefited? Uh, not this exact, not this exact table. No, this table is taken from a bylaw template. So they weren't they were given all they were given was the drawing. They weren't given a list of properties that were benefiting them. No, they were given a different list. A different list. It's not. This and thirteen eleven wouldn't have been on that other list. No. Can you forward council the what what would have been sent to them? Yeah. Okay. Derek, you have come. Yeah. So the just so kit for council's information, the, the project was tendered on that line like months before the bylaw was written. This was not. This is not new. It's not changed. It was. You know, we can I can forward you the tender. It was completely planned to stop at that place. And the other the other thing you should know is the bylaw for local improvements is only needed for if we're going to borrow. So because we're borrowing, the bylaw has to be done. If we weren't borrowing, we would not have to even do this bylaw. And we can carry on with the local improvement without the bylaw. <clears throat> and there's no way for ratepayers to object then? So they only get, have an avenue to object to a project if we borrow for it? No, they can still object to the local improvement processes, but we don't have to create a bylaw oh, okay. for municipal government approval. <clears throat> So Troy has an avenue to object. Yes. Okay. And I did. Right. So there's the board. Okay. Do you have anything else to add, Corey? Um, or Troy? I, I guess in closing, I'm just going to say, you know, over the past two, two, three weeks, I've learned a lot about bylaws and perception of bylaws. And it can be totally different one person to another. But to me, reading this, that would be the section that was being paved, provided by the town. I mean, I didn't, I didn't write this, I didn't copy it or anything, and uh, I know I got a copy of this from the municipal board, so they had the exact same thing that I read. And I just, I think that if the town doesn't follow their bylaw that they put in place right now, I really don't think any bylaws are enforceable in town. If we're not going to, as a town, we're not going to follow our own bylaws, right? Okay, thank you for your presentation, and if there's any change, uh, you'll be notified. Okay, thank you very much. Guys, have a good night. Thanks. So we'll go to correspondence, a letter from the Auditor General regarding economic development. I just got that letter today in the mail. They're sending somebody around. We don't have a community development corporation, so we have to just indicate that we do our economic development through RISE. Okay, letter from SCR's Student Exchange Program. For your information, Council, unless somebody needs to bring a resolution for it. Okay, a letter of invite from Sathawaya Cree Nation on uh, the 11th, 9.30 at the site and 10 o'clock at the Friendship Center. 
Next is the letter from the June 8th. Just thanking us for hosting the, uh, the meeting. Okay, environmental health recycling collection update report. Derek? Uh, yeah, this is just updating council on what's happening with the commercial uh, cargo <coughs> pickup. Our backup truck broke down, so currently the Lions are using their cargo truck uh, in the evenings to pick up commercial garbage and some afternoons, but it's definitely sporadic. So they've gotten a hold of a lot of businesses in town to let them know. There were a few that didn't get the message, but uh, most everyone is aware of what's happening, and when the truck is back, they'll be using it again when it's repaired. Obviously they're unwilling to pay for the repairs because recycling pickup isn't as important to the line as it is to us. <clears throat> but I do I do want to you know to give us some time. I want to schedule a meeting in September to to overview everything. I know there's an election coming up but it doesn't mean the town stops. We need to uh, we need to address this. You you wouldn't be ready to meet sooner, or uh, you, know, you want you want to come with some proposals? I take it. Yeah. Okay. September 11 looks open to me. Okay. Who's okay. on this one? Me, Councilor Sackle, and Councilor Morio, and myself. I think. Or, I'll be here that day. Okay. The 11th, unfortunately, looking ahead to my calendar. I think I'm away from the 9th or the 12th, but I'll double check. What about the 4th? We can do the 4th. Okay. Just gave myself up. 4th is good. I want to counsel that. Well, we can meet before. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <coughs> okay, we're good with that? Yep. Okay. Okay, the arena request for proposals, there's two of them there, and there's a decision paper there. Derek, do you want to comment on all of those? Uh, just from what I, I guess I just reviewed uh, uh, Patty's assessments that were submitted, and uh, they are attached. I know the budget for this was $10,000, so if this was to proceed, we've got to find $10,400 where this is going to come from. Or an option is that we wait. But uh, ICE is going in in the second week of August, I believe, it starts. So, uh, yeah, they would need uh, they would need at least from now till then to schedule to come up, get their assessments done, and we would probably receive the report in September. I'm guessing. The one suggestion there, the core samples have already been taken, but that was. A number of years ago, was it not? I don't know if those would still be valid. They would, yeah. A, a full geotechnical analysis was done in 2001, so there's been no excavation. There's definitely been fraud, uh, like uh, uh, freeze thaw, but uh, every year since then. But uh, just looking at the at the soil logs, me and Darren have seen, and there's there is a layer of silt underneath the the concrete that's causing problems and I'm pretty sure this assessment is going to point to that. I don't know what, they, what they're going to say for repairs or what to do, but uh, that's the problem. My recollection back when the assessment was done and they were thinking about expanding the arena, uh, the suggestion was that the, the ground underneath the ice surface never completely thaws out, so that's what is causing the hearing, the hearing heaving. And the suggestion at that time that the whole thing be dug out and special insulation and that be put in and then the floor be redone. Um, what are your thoughts, Derek, uh, of waiting till next year for this assessment? Like, is it imperative that it gets done this year, or can we wait till next year when we can budget the, an appropriate amount of dollars for this? It's a pretty hard case to make that this is in dire need uh, to spend ten thousand uh, dollars we've we've ran this way for 18 years 
for me to say it absolutely has to be done this year. I guess that question is to Patty and Brendan, they would, or Hugh, they would know more than I would, but from what I can tell, it, what they've told me is that it is getting worse. Is it going to get so worse 12 months from now that we can't use the rink? I would doubt that, but uh, as long as it's in the back of our minds to, to save this amount of money appropriately in the budget. I'm just thinking, like thank you here. Um, we're we going to have some potential significant financial pressures onto the budget this year um, from other areas. And if something can be pushed off one more year to the next like six months from now, so that it's all prepped and not rushed, so that it can be started as soon as the ice is out. I, I guess I you'll, you'll be faced with the same thing as you were this year. The reason why it's so late is because we don't approve the budget till May, end of May. I mean, any future year is going to be no different. So, what is the wish of council? I guess is there a resolution to that effect? There is a resolution. I'm sure, obviously, Patty would want it done right away just to get uh, an idea of what the costs are going to be and what the just the possible fixes are for it, but uh, it's up to council. This council is over budget. I'm just wondering because we keep hearing that the ice surface has changed so much that the one side has about six to eight inches. I'm just using that number, and the one side is down to one inch. I'm, I'm fearful if we, you know, we're going to leave it another year before it gets looked at as far as the, the consultation is, and then. The work won't get done for another year because the ice is going to go in again. So we're looking at you know possibly two years down the road, and then we're without ice. I don't know. I don't know if it's dire need. Do we absolutely need a skating rink? I think it's a, one of the hearts of the community. So I think it's uh, something that we have to look at. I think we just we can't keep pushing it down the road. Sometimes we have to. Face the reality and see what happens. I'd be in favor of going forward. I know it's going to hurt us uh, financially, but I hate to see the the downturn and not being able to use a rink and having you know lot lost revenue or the lost uh, not revenue but the lost uh, lost place for our kids to enjoy some winter activities. But we were paying for this ten thousand was coming out of the reserve. Um, and I think that'll leave us with 28,000 left in there. Or am I correct in that, Julie? Um, that was, uh, it doesn't mean a reinvestigation. Oh no, that was the general fund. Yeah. We're transferring 26 that we only have two grand left in there. We know of no money that's been freed up for any change of plans in that magnitude. Not right at the moment. Okay, we anybody else is going to say I missed a couple of resolutions here, so I'll get to come back. The motion moved by Councilor Moore, the second by Councilor Delar, resolved the RCMP reports of April, May, and June 2018 to receive discussion. All in favor? Carried. So now we have the resolution. The motion moved by Council Delore, second by Councilor Moore, resolved that WSP be hired to complete the building condition assessment on the Swan River Centennial Arena in the amount of 20400 plus applicable taxes. Discussion? Recorded vote, please. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried.
Can I make one more comment on this? Mm -hmm. Has, has uh, Patty bought her uh, tractor cab and mower and blade yet? No. no? Tell her to make town that maybe they can uh, not get all of that this year or something. Tell her to go look and find, uh, find something somewhere. Okay, so oh, Rail Safety Week. Motion moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Moria, whereas Public Rail Safety Week is to be held across Canada and the United States from September 23rd to 29th, and whereas it's in the public interest to raise citizens' awareness on reducing avoidable accidents, injuries, and damage caused by collisions at level crossing or incidents involving trains and citizens, therefore be it resolved that September 23rd to 29th be declared National Public Rail Safety Week in the town of Swan River. Discussion? Favor? Carried. Okay, Superintendent Works Report. Questions to Derek? Councillor White. Two questions and a comment. Uh, well report, what's happening with our wells? We've got three running and one nearly running? We've got two running, one nearly running. And the fourth one? Fourth one, I've got prices for, for development. How far is the one that's nearly running away from you? Just need to put in the pump and the drop pipe. Right. And that will happen very soon in the next day or so? We're trying to schedule the, dr the driller to come up right away. We're trying for next week. Okay. I've seen your report. You've been communicating with SPL relative to accessing water. Is there anything specific happening there? Nothing specific. No, I believe they're going to go to the RM and test the water, see what they, see what they think about it. That's from what I know. Thank you. Councillor Sapper. Did you resolve what needed to be resolved with the Sapper Toy Act over there? No. Uh, they, if, as far as I know, they are sending a letter to Council requesting that they leave the cement or the basement underground. And that is the last correspondence that I've had with them. Okay, Councillor Sapper. Is there money owing to us for scale fees? Yeah, and that is that is basically a decision up to us if we want to relate that to this new building. The the written correspondence that we have was regarding the basement only. They do know about that their subcontractor hasn't paid their bill, but we don't have any written correspondence saying that uh, no building permit unless that's paid off. And so obviously we're expecting them to pay it off at that time. And, and we learned that they paid their subcontractors. Well, the, the issue is really between us and their subcontractor. That's who that's who we sold the service to. That's right. So yeah, it's not like we contracted SAP who subcontracted this, mm -hmm. and we can take a little lien or or go so after them legally. Take them to collections. That's exactly what Terry and Julie are looking at. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, Councillor White? Well, just a comment. Uh, I believe there was a plan to. Uh, uh, Improve the aesthetics around but the fire training place over there with the burnt out cars and the things falling over and cheapers. We've got trees like 200 meters, 100 meters away from there. Is there any plant that plants some trees? It's an eyesore, it's, it's really ugly. Uh, as far as I know, I have no plans to plant any trees, but I can see with uh, Darren Frochuk if he maybe that's a fire department project he can work on. Because there was a plan to pull trees out of there and put them around there. At one time, I recall. I it, cer it certainly looks terrible. Yep, I agree. I can mention it with I'd ask you to do that. Thank you. Councilor Morial, um, the fire hydrant on number two, Pine Cove, um, can't, it says it can't be moved to the National Fire Code. Do you know anything what that's about? Yeah, uh, the fire chief got only last Friday after seeing the proposed uh, location of that fire hydrant. And he gave me the NFPA standards, which state the fire hydrant cannot be more than 12 feet away from an access, which means the curb. Uh, so I met with Cliff, or the property owner today, to, to pick a new spot, and, and that's that's what we're gonna we're gonna try and adhere to the. I don't know what it is. I asked Ron about whether it's a federal regulation or if it's more of a guideline, but uh, 
the way the fire chief explained it to me, it's the standards that insurance companies look at. If there's a problem because it was so far and not covered with snow, they couldn't access it. Now that we know that that standard's there, why didn't we put it there? I'm sure that question would come up. Costs are glorious. The sign, the Swan River sign on the, coming in on the north end of town, that was taken out because it needed repairs? It was falling over, yeah. Falling over. So is it back, I haven't driven out that way, is it back now or is it? Well, no, no, it was pretty wet and Mike has it on his list, but we've created some pretty nasty ruts that's going to require more time to landscape. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, honestly, we're just waiting for it to dry out out there because it's pretty wet. The sign is still all there, it's just the base that needs to be replaced, correct? Yes. The, the other sign on coming in from the east is getting quite overgrown, is there any plan to? Uh, I, yeah, we have, we're planning on getting the work crew out there to do some snipping. Any other questions to Derek? If not, the motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morial, resolve the superintendent works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We have the fire department reports. We have the motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morial, resolve the Swan River Fire Department report for June 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, reports. Councilor Sackle. Oh boy, I have nothing to report in this period. Thank you. Councilor Morial. Um, this weekend I attended the uh, Canada Day celebrations at uh, Legion Park where Attendance seemed to be down, but there was still a significant number of people there as we, Councillor White and myself and Councillor Friesen and Mayor McKenzie dished out uh, probably about 150 uh, ice cream cones to patrons there. So, 550. Thank you. Um, Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> not eating them. <laughs> um, so, um, so, it was a... Uh, it was a... Uh, I have a well attended uh, event despite the, the threat of rain. Uh, fireworks was very well attended even though there wasn't uh, many people on the grounds. Uh, every nook and cranny uh, parking spot where you could park a car or along uh, the, the highway is where people were watching them this year. So um, even though it wasn't evident at the ground, uh, everybody that usually watches fireworks watched them because it was uh, very well attended with all the amount of cars that uh, was noticed after. So. Uh, good job to Councillor Friesen for coordinating all that again, so hats off and much appreciated. And other than that, uh, att um, throughout the period there was no other meetings, just attending uh, organizations barbecues every other day, so I think by the end of the summer some of us are going to start looking like burgers and chips, so, uh, but uh, it's very good to get out there. So. That's all done. Councillor Friesen. The uh, 25th, I was at a library meeting and there was still, <clears throat> it was a library meeting. Um, thank you, David, for the accolades. Um, Sunday was a great day. Um, thanks for all your prayers. It kept the rain away till 5 o'clock. The ball games even got finished and then it rained. Um, I think the reason we thought it was down is that there was a whole pile of people watching ball instead of one on the grounds, which was good. I was so happy that those kids had played ball. They were called the Pee Wee Royals and unfortunately lost in the final to Dolphin. But they had a good weekend. Um, I have a huge list of thank yous to everyone that did help down there, but I'm just going to put it in the paper. So. So everybody knows who they are, and thank you very much. Um, I think that's all I have. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Deloria. Uh, I had a couple more days of negotiation since uh, last meeting. Um, only other thing I wanted to make comment on is our uh, mutual aid agreement tonight. I know I'm probably somewhat ignorant on, on the exact uh, mechanics of them, but I think within our protective service community may need to look at them as far as uh, as far as what qualifies for mutual aid. There's a couple of heavy duty 
calls out to other municipalities outside of our contracted service area in those municipalities that are mutual aid. And I have nothing against mutual aid because we've been the, we've been beneficiaries of it as well. But I think we need to ensure that that the responding fire department provides a, a first response, and we aren't the first response to a mutual aid call. Um, could you ask Darren to send us the? Uh, it would have had to have been a bylaw or agreement of some kind, or mutual aid agreement. Send it yeah. to everyone. Well, for me especially, I guess if everybody else wants a copy, that'd be great. And, and I'm not on protective services, but if I can put a bug in the committee's ear, that's probably something that needs to be looked at. And uh, that's it for me, Councillor White. A couple of afternoon evenings of salary negotiations again. I want to thank all the team for helping out in that world. And I had the uh, pleasure of bringing greetings to the uh, Welcome and Friendship Centre on behalf of Council. And it's certainly, uh, I think it's enlightening to see all the activities that group does in our community relative to education, to the harm program trying to reduce drug, drug use, to housing. I'm hard of hearing as you all know, but some, I think they said that 86 houses in our community and they pay taxes on those homes. So they're, they're a huge benefit to our, to our community in many ways. And I went to the Prairie Mount Health meeting, and they have a small surplus at the moment, which is good news, and uh, we hope that will stay the same. And as uh, many of you know, they're, they're concerned about our physiotherapy shortage, and that was talked about again. We went to the uh, Canada Day uh, celebration. My arm is still sore. Uh, 500 plus ice cream cones. A pleasure working with Mr. Mario and the mayor and company, and uh, thank you, Phil, again. And just a, a comment. I'm hoping we're getting a card for Mel. Maybe the council would like to sign. I signed on behalf of council. Pardon? I signed on behalf of council. I got a card in. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Glenn signed. As long as we get our card in. Yeah, we do. Thank you. Yeah, Councilor Friesen, are you yes, done, Councilor White? I'm done, thank you. Okay. I just forgot to mention that um, community room judges are coming on the 24th of July. If you town folks want to make sure things clean. 24th? of July. How appropriate. Go in your week. For I'll me? Have okay. an, I'm sorry. Urban Forest meeting. 10th of July. A what? Urban Forest and Beauty Zulu. Urban Forest and Beauty Zulu, July the 10th. Yeah. July the 10th. Not bad. 10 a.m. On June 27th and 28th, I attended the EMO media training and probably one of the better courses that I've ever taken as so any counselors we ever think of. Uh, I would highly recommend that you take this two-day course. Paul White, who is the media director for the province of Manitoba, he was the, uh, the presenter and he was just excellent. I, I strongly recommend it to anybody to do that, to take that particular training. Do you have the data that you can share through the email for the team? Yeah. Um, Ken Kirkpatrick wants it too, so I told him to give all my notes in that. So. Okay. But they could share that with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there was about 20 on the course from all across Manitoba. Okay, continue on. I found the agenda. Okay, Julie. Yeah. put the town logo on it. It says Veterans Community Hall. She just thought that that would help people understand that it's owned by the town because there's still you know, some confusion out there that, that it's directly connected with the region. She had money in her budget for the sign this year? Um, yeah, she would only be going with this if, if it was feasible within the budget. Are there other big projects done, the, the bathroom and the countertops? No, no, we're just going to be starting that. Um, and well, of we course, should. we would bring this to you guys, you know, once you got the price. But um, 
she's just finished getting quotes for that project, and we um, will be starting it soon. She should to hold off and assign to those commands. Sure, yeah. no problem. But you would be okay with the she can get logo? Quotes mm -hmm. Yeah, that she's going to get quotes. And it's, I would suggest that uh, hold on to it till towards more towards the end of the fiscal year to see how her budget's doing. And then if she yeah. does have money left over or whatever, then that's what she yeah, that sounds reasonable for sure. But yeah. Yep. So you guys think it would be a good idea to have the logo? Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget the miles would be Yes, I did the ones for it. I asked. Well, seven one three. I asked that oh, once. Yeah. Well, I got a question. Okay. Um, on Darren's report, I see he is getting quotes for sea cans. Are we purchasing some sea cans? We were just looking at prices to get our paint and lights people up and running just to see what it would cost to get one with a door and a vent that we could use to become a full-time household hazardous waste depot. So without, to become a full-time depot, we get help from product care. Yeah. Because everyone knows the mess out there. We haven't become, like we're not uh, partnered up with product care yet. So what they've let us do is become a paint and lights facility, which doesn't require a building. So we've gone through that application and they are helping us to a point with the mess out there. So we'll be able to get some money off the province uh, to help clean up that mess. But if we if we want to become a full-time household hazardous waste, I don't know if some counselors remember Randy Weber doing a I remember just, I was just going to ask, we had people and they were going to build us a building at some like or, or they were going to finance one for us or something? That program is over. Okay. So now it's on the municipalities to uh, do it themselves and we were just getting prices to see what it would, to what it would take. And what, why didn't we want to go with that? I remember we discussed it and we decided not to go with whatever they were offering. Uh, it. The, the year that we put it in our budget and went forward, they slashed it before okay. we could take advantage. Right. Okay. Um, one more question on uh, Ken, as you can, Ken's report uh, regarding a safety concern about the uh, front counter there. Is there a plan that's being worked on, I guess, to, to get something in? Okay, any other questions? Okay, we have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve the accounts as followed by hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check 22639 to 22709 for a total of 113,032.93. Hundred Payroll accounts from check 4243 to 4253 for a total of 116,835.76. And payroll accounts from check 4254 to 4261 for a total of 111,050.51. ,050 Questions to Julie on any of the checks? 002269 Brentag, that, that, that's some sort of uh, equipment? No, that is the ferric sulfate from oh. the all in favor of the resolution? It's carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, whereas the 2018 capital budget included 13500 for firefighter protective equipment to be borne by the fire truck reserve replacement fire truck replacement reserve, where such equipment has been purchased by three invoices in the amount of 11937 less 52820 GST, 1469 less $65 GST, and 1469 less $65 GST for a total cost of 14217.12, and whereas the resolution 2018-310 uh, transferred only 11937 from the fire truck replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Therefore, be it resolved, the remaining budget amount of 1562.68 be transferred from the fire truck replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Discussion? So this this is the blowback from uh, last, last meeting. 
because we thought maybe he had that in his operating, but he didn't have that in his operating? That's right. Uh, the, all the invoices were for the, the uh, personal protective equipment that was put into the capital budget. Any other discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, whereas the 2018 capital budget included 150000 for water supply emergency to be borne by the water and sewer reserve, and whereas the cost of the water uh, supply emergency was 154792 therefore be it resolved 150000 be transferred from the water and sewer reserve fund to the utility operating fund. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve that Caden Stewart be hired as a part-time lifeguard, effective June 27, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sackle, resolve that the Birchwood Cemetery policy be amended to require black headstones mounted on black bases to be installed with pins. Uh, comment on that, Derek? Yeah, we've we spent a considerable amount of time on, it's just two examples, but we spend a lot of time with the families there, extremely upset. They come to us thinking that we've moved their headstones, and they are, like I say, extremely upset. But uh, we've contacted the manufacturers, and this is not, or this is very typical that they do creep. They become so hot that the glue melts, and, and they do move. So. They just recommended that uh, what we need is pins that can be placed when they're when they're first ordered. So if if the, it's not stopping anyone from getting the black base, if they want it that way, our cemetery will require that they put pins in the base so that the the headstone doesn't move. <coughs> Councilor Moore, um, is it only the black headstones and bases that are causing the issue? There's none with no issues with any of the other colors or stuff like that? No, the only ones that we haven't caused are the black on black. Is, wouldn't it be just easier that uh, um, we just apply a uniform policy of all headstones require pins? The thought? I guess we don't we don't have the problem we don't have an issue with the like a normal cement base mm -hmm. and a black headstone. We, we don't have an issue with it moving. But we can, if that's council's wish. And would uh, question with pins, like I'm not knowing how big the pins would be. If, the, if there was an adequate size pin in there, depending on how it is, would, would that potentially help with them falling over? Uh, no, no, they're way too heavy. Okay. Any other discussion? So, so the pins are, are inside the headstone, like in front yeah. of the base. They'd be in the base, sticking up. Okay. All it would do is stop that headstone from moving. If it was to fall over, it's not going to stop that. All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sackle resolve that the assessment alterations amendments as listed by Manitoba Indigenous and Municipal Relations Assessment Services dated June 19, 2018, be made to the 2018 property tax roll under the authority of section 306 and 326 of the Municipal Act. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve that the financial statements for the five months ended May 31st, 2018, be adopted as received. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I had a chance to look through them um, today, and I just need, need to point out that knowing what is going on in the background with discussions, with negotiations, we just spent or authorized another 10 grand that's not budgeted. Uh, for the arena assessment, uh, I think um, 
to ensure that uh, we don't go over budget this year, that I think the board needs to go out to the department heads that uh, start looking where we can start saving money and um, watching the pennies. It's easier to come up with the money when we start sooner than later. Because um, we do, uh, we potentially have the RCMP retro pay that might be due this year. Um, that's not factored in there yet, so there's some costs that will be forthcoming that I think we need to start saving for or be mindful of. And some of them have some pretty big dollar values. Okay, all in favor of the resolution? Okay, uh, the next one, uh, we have the resolutions regarding the truck. So there's the decision paper on the truck. I open the, uh, for discussion on the purchase of the truck for the work group. Councillor Delorde first and then Councillor Morgan. So uh, I noticed in the, in the uh, agenda, use the word buyback. So province is going to pay us, we'll buy the truck. In the end, whose truck will it be once it's paid? It'll be owned by the town. It'll be owned by the town. So, so there's no, they're, they're not actually buying from us or anything. Um, Jack told me the reason why we need to do this is because the project can't own. Mm -hmm. a, a yeah, I, just when I seen the word buyback, it just seemed like like maybe they would buy it from us. But so we will, we will ultimately own the truck. Okay? And so uh, there's also a part of the proposal is doing a, a old swap roo there. The, the what's the year and details on on Mike's truck? 2007, 100 and I think 100 and just under 180,000. It's still a working truck. Mm -hmm. And it's a quad cab four wheel drive? It's a quad cab four wheel drive, yeah. Okay. So, that, and that'd be the ideal route to go is, is the option one that you proposed? Or that's what that's managed preferred option? That is, that's what me and Julie have discussed. I don't think Warren is too excited about it, but... Uh, uh, well, have you have told Jack that that might be an option? No, no, we have not discussed it. I just wonder what their take on it might be. I guess if you can get them to agree to that, all the power to you. Yeah. But yeah, we just, they're paying the payments on the other one, and we're going to end up with a truck. I, I think we can't look a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I just wouldn't want to, this is a pretty good opportunity for the town, I just wouldn't want to uh, upset them by trying to take advantage, not not take advantage, but just try. We'll be up front with yeah. that. Yeah, we'll be up front, and if they're, if they're for it, hey, great. Yeah. yeah, we just started talking about that option. Yeah. So which is the option that we need the mover and the second or pick an option? And Mike, you said Mike's truck was a quad cab, and that's what they require. They do require a quad cab. I think, I think the decision to purchase a truck, like which truck, uh, we should focus on on the outcome. I think it'll depend on on Jack and, and how he whether he'll be able to accept it. It was just my outcomes that I was giving to council that we're going to try and do. Uh, so the resolution will be to is to buy determine which truck is going to be. Be purchased, yeah, and then whether you guys go with option one or option two, okay. that's to be worked out yeah. between you and the work through program. Yeah. Is that your old truck house for there? For what? So, the, the recommendation if we're going, I'm looking at a uh, recommendation two is that it the local one from, from Keyshev or the one from Northland Ford? Uh, what's, what's the resolution? The uh, resolution. resolution I left blank. Yes, yeah, there's um, nothing in the resolution. I, I just stated if uh, I recommend the, if you're going local, obviously the key shelf. We're the best bang for our dollars in Dodge from North Carolina. Well, as I just stated, we're short on funds or tight with on funds this year. So, um, looking at similar mileages in years, there's a six thousand dollar difference there. Uh, how, how would we explain a six thousand? That's that doesn't even fall within the 
purchasing by allowed to buy local. That's five percent. Is it going to be harder to explain why we went out of town than it is the six thousand? It's a twenty-five percent difference. How do you explain to a taxpayer why you went out of town? Why? Yeah. Well, why you no? Why you wasted twenty-five percent of their dollars? Yeah. So you could shop local. Uh, Just saying. There's no one said this. The uh, truck in the paw, have you seen it personally? I haven't seen it, but uh, we did send employees to look. The, the actual truck from the key came from the from the paw as well. The key is bringing it down, so we've seen both trucks. And it's it's still in good shape. It is, it is rougher. The one in the paw? The one in the paw. It is rougher. It's a, there's some dents in the door, but pretty minor. Uh, like I say, same kilometers, but it doesn't have like it is more of a base model. We yeah. have seen. And then what do you? I'm oh, sorry, Jason. Right? Just did they give you any sort of service records on either one of the trucks? Just mind you, sometimes now there's lots of opportunity. You know, if it was a. Well, I guess Northland probably can't give you service records because it's a Dodge truck. I thought if it was a Ford, then they'd have a, you know, for the service at their own shop. And same with the Chevy, but they're both. I guess the Chevy, they might have a better service record for you. But yeah, all the trucks on the list are, are safety, but nowadays that doesn't mean a lot. Who did some things doesn't hurt my feelings, but something, something. So, so Derek, Sorry. what it says required extra, so. Uh, the one from Nepal, or, or all of them except from uh, Key, says a thousand extra. What's what's that? That's a radio, LED light. Uh, what else do we get? Seat so covers. The, so the one from Key Chef has that already. Key Chef price included. Yeah. Like what kind of radio? Just our regular CD radios. I think they're they're actually expensive. They're about seven fifty eight hundred dollars. So that narrows the price down. So you have to add a thousand dollars onto the twenty. So it's twenty two five. It would be twenty two five for the other one. Yeah. That's five thousand dollars without the tokens. Fifty two hundred. Still twenty percent plus difference. Truck that's used for shovels, everything you get thrown in there. It's a the truck that gets shovels, up. trees, landscapes. So, a few Mike, Mike's truck, as well, is used out at the lagoon. Like Mike's truck has some dings in it, too. Like so, it, so, a few dings on it, adding a few more dings is not going to make it. No, and it, both trucks are they have steel wheels, like no tint, they're not flashy. That's about great. Uh, I, I believe the key chef one is gray, like dark gray. And North Line one I believe is white. So we're down to five thousand dollars difference. Twenty percent, yeah. Blue. Blue. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Three, up, three or five? It's five. Five percent. But I mean, this isn't exactly apples to apples either. So I mean, you could you could argue probably for any one of these things. Yeah, this is not a, This is not a spec tender. So, and so and with, with whatever value this truck is purchased, it it's going to be recouped from work. So mm -hmm. it's money that's going to be recouped at hundred percent. But I mean, whether it's us paying for it or the province paying for it, it's taxpayers' money. Okay, we have the monster sample. So do we have to find out from the work crew, from Jack, if this is acceptable, our plan, before we pass this? Uh, no, we'll, we'll work out the options um, with the work crew, like whether or not we'll swap out Mike's truck or, or not. We'll work that out with them, but the resolution tonight is just to get a get a truck purchase so we can move forward with mm -hmm. a plan. 
so that they have a truck because right now they're renting the van from us. Any other discussion? So we have the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved town purchase half ton truck from Northland Ford in the amount of 22500 Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. So we need another resolution then to Truck. We just decided not to buy this one, so. Okay, so we'll have to put so we make, take up another. Someone want to propose another resolution? The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second. You can draft, draft it up. I'll go ahead. Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved the town of Swan River Council to prepare the Northwest Round of an exhibition being held July 26, 27, 28, and 29, 2018, as a significant event for the town of Swan River. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So, backing up to that truck purchase, the intent of the defeating of the purchase from the truck from the car to not purchase a truck or to purchase a different truck but not that one? Concert sound. I voted against it just to keep the money local for okay, myself. So just I don't want to see my tax dollars in any which way, whether it's the province or from town, leave town if I don't have to. I know it's $5,000 more, but they pay taxes here, they supply workers here. I, I know a lot of times our hands are tied and we can't and the dollars do leave our town for contractors and other situations. And to me, a dollar spent in Swan River, whether it be 5,000 more, it's money well spent. But, it, but the intent was not to not purchase a truck. My intent was to not, not purchase a truck. My intent was to defeat that one, put another resolution on the floor to spend the money locally on a truck in town. That's just mine. I'm all for shopping local, but it isn't that philosophy end up going to cost our tax rate more in the long run. We, we're not giving our uh, local uh, bidders incentive to have their pencils as sharp as they can be. If they know that they can be 20% higher than anybody from out of, out of town, isn't that doing our taxpayers a disservice? Oh, so I think most of the tenders are always closed. I don't think they have an, an idea or, or think that they're always going to be higher. I think it's a, it's a bid every time and, and a lot of times we can't. A lot of times the, the bids come in and it's exact spec to a certain vehicle. If they don't meet that spec and it's like this can't be, this might not be apples to apples. Uh, I don't know the whole situation on the truck. This one's in better shape. Any yeah. other discussion? White. I, I agree with both sides, but I also believe we want to shop local. I also remember he's got 30, 40 staff working over there, and those staff are going to benefit by buying cars from them. They'll stay employed and they'll spend tax on them. So we have the motion moved by Councillor Delore, second to Councillor White. Was all the town purchased a half ton truck from Keisha Holes in the amount of 27777 Discussion? Recorded vote, please. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Oh, uh, isn't there uh, 8.9? Yeah. Is there not a resolution for 8.9? Yes, we did. No, we declared a significant event. We did that already? No, yes. we did not it prior. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, West West oh West okay. 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 All in favor of going in camera? I did hear it. 